quarry at Beton de Coteau, which is right near the town of Saint César, uh, near Rougemont. And the sedimentary deposits you can see behind me have never been buried. They're just loose, unconsolidated sediments. They're not rocks yet. They're very young. They're only Pleistocene in age. And they were deposited during a time of like rapidly changing environment. The big ice sheet, big North American ice sheets were in recession. And this area was still depressed from the weight of the ice sheet. So it hadn't rebounded yet. So it was often below sea level, uh, but the ice was kind of coming and going in fingers. And um, in front of the ice was a big river driven environment that was draining sediment and meltwater from the ice sheet. And so the sedimentary deposits of the, that we call, we know today as the Champlain Sea, is an interbedding mixture of rocks deposited or sediments deposited directly by us, uh, river deposits from the outflow environment, and then the sea itself coming in and um, infiltrating the region time and time again during the period of recession of the ice sheets. So these complicated layers you see behind me include uh, sediments. I think here we have mostly fluvial and ice deposited sediments. So let's go take a closer look at what those look like. All right, these beautiful layers you know, here on the wall of the sand quarry are characteristic of uh, a river environment that's very dynamic, changes water velocity and direction often. So what I can see here is these coarse sand layers, uh, they have a really wide variety of different types of sand grains in them. Um, dark ones that are fragments of probably metamorphic rock, maybe even coming down from the Canadian Shield. Lots of quartz and feldspar, those grains probably are a single crystal and they may have eroded from places like the Grenville Mountain. out here because the wind whips through the sand quarry and takes out the loose sand but it can't quite as effectively remove that clay rich stuff. So you can see that there's very fine laminations within the clay layers and within the sand layers and that records the swashing of different energies of water in what was probably a shallow river system. Some of these units even show some cross bedding. And that's probably representative of things like sandbar migration. Uh, so we've seen that a little bit earlier in the course. But uh, when a sandbar is a grating on one side and sand is falling down and uh, building out in one direction, then we can see these lateral cross beds that formed and were deposited as that sandbar moved across. Okay, just above me at the top of the bluff is a really nice little exposure of this what I think is a ground moraine. It's a very poorly sorted material. We've got a big boulder, probably too big to carry, uh, about 60 centimeters. We've got all manner of cobbles in here and they're completely unsorted. Little ones on top of big ones, all enmeshed in this kind of clayey, sandy background matrix. No river could produce a deposit like that. Those kind of deposits are produced by very powerful sediment carriers. And the two kinds of sediment carriers that can do that are things like landslides, where everything can be well mixed because there's so much energy involved, or things like glaciers, where they, they're so high density that even though they're moving slowly, they can lift all class equally, and they're not really concerned about sorting. So this would be called a ground moraine, or a till deposit, T-I-L-L. -L. And deposits like this blanket much of Canada and uh, the northern sort of half of the United States from the great extents of Pleistocene ice sheets that cover this part of North America. Um, in some places they're thin, in some places they're quite thick. In some places we see uh, big deposits of interbedded sand and river systems that kind of show the different types of environments that existed in the, in the in windows behind, between ice sheet advance and oftentimes the earlier deposits like this from the earliest ice sheets 
were completely wiped away when the subsequent ice sheets came and covered North America. So even scraping down to bare rock. And that's what happened in the far north, which is why we have beautiful bedrock exposures at a lot of the far north of Canada. Right along the top of the fluvial layers and just below those ground moraine deposits, we see a bed that has layers like the river sediments, but they look very convolute. They don't look smooth and subhorizontal like the ones below. They're really mixed up. And if we zoom up here, we can actually see some ball and pillow structures, some dish structures. Now, those lie just beneath that glacial, bouldery glacial deposit up there. And those form normally by rapid loading of the sediment. The glacier loading down on top of these wet, wet river deposits would have caused pressurization of the water in the sediments, causing the sediments to liquefy and swish about and flow around. And that's what creates this very convolute layer. So this is a really nice example of kind of the first effects of the glacial deformation on the landscape. When the glacier overrides soft sediment, it causes this really distinctive deformed layer. And we can even see another deformation feature that records the effects. Up at the top, there's a light colored, uh, gently bedded, nicely bedded uh, sand layer. And it's crisscrossed with lots of uh, well, they're called deformation bands and they, they're mostly vertical or sub-vertical, steeply dipping, maybe 70 to 80 degrees. And they trace from the very base of the glacial deposit down through the sand layer. So those are a special kind of little slip zone that form in well-sorted sands. And they're in a geometry that's characteristic of normal faults, which are related to flattening. So that also records the crushing weight of the glacier coming over these unconsolidated sediments and creating this beautiful pattern of deformation in those little slip zones where the sand grains are probably crushed inside because that was the sand compacting quickly under the weight of the glacier. What the sand quarry is interested in is the sand, obviously, so they stop digging if they hit uh, Champlain Sea sediments. Um, you've probably heard about at least one of the deposits of the Champlain Sea, which is the Lida clay. It's what's called a sensitive clay, and it's responsible for a lot of the landsliding that happens, like in the Montreal to Ottawa area. And um, basically, the reason for that is that the clay particles, uh, when they're deposited in salt water, they're actually stabilized by uh, chemically by the salt into a configuration um, that's a little bit stiff and when rainwater eventually percolates through those sediments and actually washes away some of that salinity that chemical reinforcement collapses and allows those clays to liquefy and that's, that's what causes the landsliding and it can have pretty catastrophic effects. This isn't the only part of Canada that's affected by this effect of sensitive clays or these clays that are stabilized by a certain poor water chemistry. Um, for example, in and around the city of Victoria, they also have a glacial marine clay um, that is currently being penetrated by rainwater and it does cause destabilization in construction in Victoria. One thing that you might have noticed if you live in an older building in Montreal is that some of the bricks actually have little tiny bivalve shells that are fired right into the brick. And that's because um, deposits of this general age, in particular this, the, the clay deposits that are associated with the Champlain Sea, have actually provided the clay for the brick quarries in this region for over 100 years. And so a lot of those fossils that are mixed into the clays actually made it into the walls all right, I'm here by the side of McGill's faculty club. Do not try to get in without a faculty member, but keep in mind, they don't take cash, so only the faculty member can buy your food and drinks. Uh, we have this beautiful old brick wall behind me, and it has some special features. Hmm. Let's see. 
Here we go. Do you see that? It's cat footprints. So this particular outcrop in the sand quarry, I haven't actually seen any fossils. Uh, but uh, elsewhere in deposits of the same age, we do see better preservation of fossils. And they include things like in the marine sediments, we see uh, whale bone, seal teeth, um, beluga, narwhal, like evidence for all of the beautiful marine creatures that would have in inhabited the, the St. Lawrence lowlands when the sea level was filling this basin. Um, we also see evidence for a lot of those Ice Age uh, terrestrial megafauna. Bears, moose, elk, uh, wolves, lots of the species that we know and love in addition to some Pleistocene species that aren't around anymore.